Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Henry Wolf, and I'm the Director of Government Relations for Travers Connect. Very excited to welcome everyone viewing now and for the recording that will be posted uh, later on within 24 hours of this forum. We're very excited to hear from both our mayoral and city commission candidates uh, today. Our candidates have been provided five questions in advance and we'll have five minutes in total to answer these questions. We'll post the question being asked in the chat box so people can reference and we will ask questions uh, one at a time. So our timekeeper, Liz Petrella, will keep track of that time and we'll be raising cards when there are 30 seconds left. And also when time runs out, you'll get this signal. Um, candidates will be introduced in alphabetical order by last name starting with mayoral candidates and then moving on to the city commission candidates. But due to time constraints, we will not be taking questions during the event, but it is being recorded and will be posted on the Travers Connect YouTube page within 24 hours of the event. So please feel free to share with your networks. Uh, with that, we'll begin uh, begin to get to, to know our candidates here and we'll start with Mayor Pro Tem Shamro. Thanks for joining us, Amy. Thank you. So we'll start with our first question for one minute. Why are you running for mayor, and are there current city policies, projects, or approaches that you're hoping to change or champion? And if so, how? Sure. Um, so one minute's a quick answer for this. Amy, for some reason, we're having trouble with the audio. Oh, no. Can you hear me now? Okay, I can hear you. Sorry. Okay, sorry. Okay, so um, quick question or quick answer for a big question, but short story is i've been on the commission for eight years i've been pro tem for six years i felt like this was a good time to run uh for mayor we have a lot of issues facing us that are have been there for a while that i have experience in like housing and development but also i just think it's a good time to have some new leadership some new blood that's has experience but also has a different eye than maybe some of our previous leaders. Um, I think definitely housing. I'm really excited about the pilot project or pilot program we just passed this past week. Um, I think that with some other um, options that are coming out of Lansing are gonna allow us to expand what we can do locally. And I'm really excited that we're gonna be able to do that with more local control instead of just being our hands being tied by Lansing. I'm also really um, kind of excited. I think it's gonna be great that we have a new city manager coming in as mayor and pro tem. We work a lot with the city manager. Um, to kind of be that inter inter intermediary between the commission and the management, um, though everybody has access. And I think that's gonna be a great new chapter that I think I can really help lead on. Um, so there's a bunch of other things, but uh, with one minute, I don't wanna belabor it. And I also wanna apologize if I'm in a hotel room, so if any background noise is coming through, I apologize to anybody at home. <laughs> Loud and clear, thank you, Amy. Question number two, what do you see as the mayor's role in addressing the gaps in the housing continuum? Well, I think that um, this is a good point to make out. Mayors are kind of the same as the commissioners as far as our votes go. But I think as a mayor who's got, who would have come in with eight years of experience, experience with a lot of people in the community, a lot of connections in the community that I've worked on all these years, I think that helps us to always be open to new ideas. I think, like I mentioned, there's the pilot programs that are out there. Um, that's going to be great for working with developers and, and individual homeowners. There's going to be some things that are going to allow us to get into the neighborhoods where we have good connections and help create small pockets of housing opportunities, which is where I think the real opportunity is for the city. There's going to you know, we have some parking lots and some other properties that we've looked at. We'll continue to look at the developing some of those, but we can't have a fire sale of all the city properties either and just put housing in. So I think some of these new programs coming out of Lansing are gonna give us some opportunity to work with local partners and people in the community that just wanna help uh, to really work, to really find some opportunities from everything from ADUs to maybe, um, you know, one and two bedroom duplexes that have been there for years that maybe before couldn't they couldn't afford to do lower rent on. And having those connections over the last eight years, I think allows you to have a lot more conversations with a lot more people. Thank you. Question number three, do you support the use of tax increment financing as a tool for the region to share in the cost of the city's infrastructure and community development? Well, we just, I'm glad we have this question today. We just had our presentation on Monday in a joint session with the DDA and um, the one condition I was really looking for in the new TIF plan seems like it will be there, which is that there'll be cost sharing with the neighboring jurisdictions. 
Um, I think TIF is a good tool. It's one of the only tools we have for collecting money from the whole region and not just on tax city taxpayers. But knowing that we'll be sharing it out, I think makes it a little bit easier. Um, there's, you know, it seems to have the full support of all the taxing jurisdictions. And it's such a vital part of keeping Traverse City, Traverse City that it's grown to be. I grew up here. I remember when downtown would close at six and there was a lot of vacancy. I think TIF and the investments we've been able to make in downtown have made a huge difference. But I also think that um, we have to be careful not to just assume that will continue on if we were to get rid of TIF and that things would magically stay the same. Right now, it's only the people in that district that are paying that fee and that into that fund and it's being reinvested in that. If that were to go away, we'd lose $1.7 million right off the top every year that the city would not see at all. And that we would then see, um, you know, we'd have to see that on the neighborhoods, basically. I look at the bridges that were just done in this, these last couple of years. A lot of TIF money went into that. If that had had to come out of the general fund of the city, there were a lot of neighborhood projects that wouldn't have been done either. So I think as a whole, TIF is a really good program that we need to keep in a newer way, but I think we need to keep that both for maintenance and doing important things like the Boardman River restoration. Thank you. Question number four, how do you believe the city should engage with regional partners to attract more young people and working age families to our region? Okay, I think Traverse Connect is a great one for that. I think that continuing to make our downtown thriving is something that people wanna to come to. So that's what we can do by continuing to invest in it and keeping that in mind. And also looking at all of our housing options and working with housing partners from private to nonprofit to get it done. Can we fit another one in in 15 seconds? Yes, <laughs> question number five, as you look at the future of Traverse City, whose voices or perspective most inspire you and what do they inspire you to seek to accomplish during your term? Okay, well, I think that um, Brian Crow in the past, what he did to build downtown, I look at what um, you know, happened at Horizon Books with that, making that a hub downtown when everybody was leaving, looking at all those innovators and seeing how our local community and business people were able to reinvigorate and really support downtown and looking at what a strong local business community we have. I think that I'll always look to them to help us attract and retain people. Thank you very much, Mayor Pro Tem Amy Shamro. I would also like to mention that you jammed a lot in there. That was uh, I can talk um, fast when I need to. <laughs> I should note also, uh, Tom Mayor chose not to participate uh, this evening, so there are two two candidates running for mayor: Mayor Pro Tem Amy Shamro and and Tom Mayor. Um, next, we'll be moving on. Uh, we have Jackie Anderson up next. Miss Anderson, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much, Henry. Great to be here. Well, we will do the same lightning around here. Uh, and starting with question number one, why are you running for city commission and are there any current city policies, projects, or approaches that you're hoping to change or champion? If so, how? Well, I think we have all seen uh, over the years some signs of dysfunction in city government, but recently it seems to me that we have reached a new low. Um, we have many key positions that are unfilled. There's no strategic planning. Um, there are transparency concerns. And as our interim city manager said just last Monday, trust between government and its citizens is broken. Um, I'm running for a number of reasons. I'd like to see better planning. I'd like to see more dri data-driven decision-making. I want to improve communication and I want to start to rebuild that trust between Traverse City and its government. Um, I would like to work on the, the trust gap in a couple of ways. First, better communication through things like public office hours and actually answering communications from residents. Um, I would like to create a dialogue, not just a monologue. Thank you. And question number two, what do you see as the city commission's role in addressing gaps in the housing continuum? I fully support the city commission working with nonprofit housing developers like Homestretch and using new tools like the pilot program to help reduce housing costs. I do think that affordable housing is gonna be most effective when it's located along our corridors and close to shopping and services and existing transportation. Um, but importantly, affordable housing isn't just a city issue, it's a regional issue. And we can only solve it when we work with our regional partners. Thank you. 
Question number three, do you support the use of tax increment financing as a tool for the region to share in the cost of the city's infrastructure and community development? I do. I think that TIF can be an excellent economic development tool, but I think there are serious challenges in aligning TIF priorities with community priorities. Um, back in 1997, there was no conflict. Uh, the community clearly saw the economic threat to downtown that was represented by outlying shopping malls, and, and so TIF 97 was born. Today, the conditions are a bit different. Uh, we see private investment in downtown thriving, and um, the need for tax subsidies may not be quite as clear and quite as universal. So I'd like to see a balance between supporting downtown and supporting citywide needs. Um, it's simply a matter of fairness to businesses that are located outside of downtown and all over the city. Thank you. Question number four, how do you believe the city should engage with regional partners to attract more young people and working age families to the region? Well, I, I am watching with, um, a lot of interest, the uh, the new Metropolitan Planning Organization. Um, we know it's focused specifically on transportation issues, but it might also provide a model for how we can cooperate regionally on some of the big economic issues like wages and housing and childcare that will impact our ability to, to attract young families. So I think about the potential if our entire region worked together to attract employers who have higher paying jobs, or if we coordinated our housing development with regional public transit planning, or if we lobbied together to expand the, the TriShare program that reduces childcare costs. Um, these are just a few examples of regional efforts that I think could really move the needle on attracting and retaining young families in our area. Thank you. That last question, as you look to the future of Traverse City, whose voices or perspectives most inspire you and what do they inspire you to seek to accomplish during your term on the commission? Oh, I, I'm inspired by the people. Um, I, they're so engaged. We are so vocal. We're so many great ideas. Um, it inspires me to think that by listening to those voices and using those ideas, that we can make some serious progress on these long-term issues that impact us all. Thank you, Ms. Anderson. I appreciate you those answers to those questions and staying well within the timeline. Thank you. Uh, next, we have uh, Kenneth Funk. Mr. Funk, thanks for joining us. Uh, so we'll kick it off our first question. Why are you running for city commission and are there any current city policies, projects, or approaches that you're hoping to change or champion? And if so, how? Thank you for the question. Um, <clears throat> the biggest thing that I want to address and it's something that can actually be addressed right away is a staffing crisis that's facing the entire city. Multiple department head positions are open, multiple entry level positions are open, and they're going unfilled. And there's a reason for that. And we need to address it as a city commission. Um, the other issues I'd like to address are housing and infrastructure. And when I think of infrastructure, I think of hard and soft infrastructure, um, soft being the human component of it and hard being the, um, the streets, water, Water, water lines, sewer lines, all that stuff that we depend on, that's going to, um, you know, when you pay taxes, you have an expectation of receiving services. And if we don't have people to deliver those services, then we have a serious problem. It was identified by the interim city manager in his first 10 days on the job when he made his first report to the city commission. And that's something I've said a few times already, and I want to continue to reiterate it. Because regardless of how this election turns out and who gets elected, if I get elected or other people do, this problem isn't going away and it needs to be a key item of the city commission's goals of their next agenda. So housing, we're going to do we're going to do more for that and talk about that in the next question. But there really is a staffing crisis and we can relate that down to recruitment and retention and then uh, infrastructure. So. Thank you. And yes, question number two, moving right into housing. What do you see as the commission's role? 
with respect to affordable housing? Um, the things that we can do as a city at the local level, I think, are focusing on zoning amendments that that are specific to different areas because some things work in different neighborhoods that don't work in other neighborhoods. And that's been part of the big contention with these, uh, with the zoning proposals that were, you know, voted on by the planning commission and then re referred on to the city commission. And a lot of people are upset with right now. And if we took a more closer look at the community and said, these issues, these, you know, what about Titus street? That, that would be a great opportunity for some, um, duplexes, maybe even some triplexes versus something like going down State Street in the Boardman neighborhood. Those that just wouldn't work there. I mean, that's a historic neighborhood. So instead of doing <clears throat> when we take a local approach, um, we focus on the community and we try and make things better. We need to work with regional and state partners for those financial tools and that um, that we really need that we can't that we can't just develop on our own in our community, but we can work with through the state. So speaking of those financial tools for question number three, do you support the use of tax increment financing as a tool for the region to share in the cost of the city's infrastructure and community development? Um, I've had a lot of time to talk about TIF and think about TIF. And honestly, um, I, I think my relationship with TIF is kind of like a, an atheist that converted to Christianity. I did not like TIF at all when it when I first started to learn about it, and I, I was frustrated that the DDA seemed to have you know carte blanche on whatever they wanted to do with that money. But I've taken a long look at it, and I recognize this thing is probably the most important important financial tool that the city has at its disposal to take money and make people pay their fair share. When I say people, I'm talking about those tax entities inside that TIF district that use that, that we take that money, TIF takes that money and uses it for infrastructure and it doesn't come off the backs of the residents. I'm always for anything that doesn't promote increased taxes on the residents. And if we didn't have TIF as a tool, we would, we would be forced to burden the taxpayer, the residents with that with that, with that money that we need to do those infrastructure projects in the downtown area and the rest of the city at large. Um, I think people have any, I want to talk about this for a little bit longer than the other things because it's such a big deal. I got it. I got a minute and a half by my watch. I'm sorry. Timer. Give me some flexibility. Um, it's, this is a big deal, but let's move on to the next one. Uh, next sure, question. question. Question number four, how do you believe the city should engage with regional partners to attract more young people and working families to the region? Um, as a city, we're a leader in this area and we need to take the reins as leaders and address the issues. I mean, we have a huge recruitment retention challenge with the city and it's directly related to wages. And it's the elephant in the room that we have to address. We're spending money on commercials, we're hiring recruiters, and we're still not getting people. But when, when a journeyman uh, lineman from Light and Power gets their lineman card, they leave and go to Consumers Energy because they can get more money there. There's there's a lot of issues addressed to wages and we have to we have to look at that and address it. Um the 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 um the employers that don't have staffing problems are the best paying ones and we have to take a look at that. Last one question number five is you look at the future of Traverse City, whose voices or perspectives most inspire you? Uh, I'm most encouraged and inspired by the people that are willing to, th that I identify as thinking differently than me. Uh, I mean, we could all live in our own little world in our own echo chamber and only hear what we want to hear. But, you know, as a firefighter in this city, I routinely deal with people that are different than me, that see things from a different perspective. And I have to accept that and understand it. And it, it makes me a better person. It would make me a better commissioner because things aren't black and white there there's a lot of gray in this world and we have to look at things through a different lens than what we're used to seeing it so i'm inspired by people who openly share their difference of opinion and perspective and life experiences because that's that's what challenges me to grow as a person and that's you know that's what i look for well thank you mr fung and everyone is doing a great job staying in those time frames and i know there's a lot more that that could be said but appreciate everyone staying in in the time frames there. And uh, next we'll move on to Ms. Kennedy. Hello. Ms. Kennedy, thanks for, for joining us. We'll hop right into it. Number one, why are you running for city commission? Are there any 
current city policies, projects, or approaches that you're hoping to change and champion? If so, how? Um, I'm running because I have a 35-year career in public policy with 22 years specifically in local government in Michigan. I've trained elected officials in their role, uh, Open Meetings Act, council manager form of government, you name it. I've worked with city managers across northern Michigan and around the state. Um, I know the issues um, very well. I was assistant manager in Elk Rapids and a department head in Boyne City, so I know things from both sides of the table. And I what I want to do is bring those insights to the Traverse City Commission. Um, <clears throat> I also want to be able to use that to support our new city manager. Um, we have a lot of issues to tackle here, which we're going to get to, but what I want to champion first is what our interim city manager identified, and that was Traverse City's budget does not align with its priorities. Um, we have pension debt to address. We need to establish a multi-year budget. We need to align that multi-year budget with our capital improvement plan. These are basic responsibilities of the commission that um, they need to be accomplished. And um, and staffing, staffing is the other big one, um, as Mr. Funk had mentioned. You had question number two, what do you see as the city commission's role in addressing gaps in the housing continuum? Oh, okay, so I'm gonna talk fast. Um, we need to establish strong regional partners. We should already have this with our county and our townships. We should already have a dedicated person at Housing North as other counties do. Um, so this isn't an area um, for immediate focus. This is, this is some low hanging fruit. We also wanna preserve and grow our own housing stock in the city. How do we do that? Like others have said, we pursue payment in lieu of taxes at new ordinance that we have. Um, we review a cap on short-term rentals in the commercial zones. We work with our county land bank. We institute programs that others are using in Northern Michigan, such as rental preservation, deed restrictions, and community land trusts. These tools, the ones I just mentioned, they protect modest housing stock from cash buyers and gentrification. Um, and then five, I think we need to work on the design standards to regain the trust um, of our residents and to treat our city with respect. Do you support the use of tax increment financing as a tool for the region to share in the costs of the city's infrastructure and community development? Um, so yes, and I would like residents to keep an open mind. I know it's been controversial, but we want to keep an open mind and here's why. Residents already pay too much for issues that are bigger than the city, like homelessness. There should be regional contributions to these issues and there are not. Um, so let's be deliberate and not risk regional funding for infrastructure that is used by the region. Let's learn the new cost um, sharing proposal. Um, it, this is, it's about city infrastructure and community development for residents, not for tourists. If we don't proceed with this diligence in a few years, we could be looking at um, a city resident, non-resident income tax or a millage proposal. Um, so yes, I support TIF. Thank you. How do you believe the city should engage with regional partners to attract more young people and working age families to the region? Uh, so I am really excited um, with what NMC, Michigan Tech, 20 Fathoms, um, Traverse Connect, and there are more, are doing with the blue economy. Um, my son is attending the new four-year NMC Marine Technology degree program. Um, he'll be able to stay here with an excellent salary. Um, so these blue economy tech companies um, provide a wide array of professional options and their salaries can support, um, a, you know, affording a home here for families. 
And so what that does is that brings, you know, children into our schools. It brings professional spouses with those families who can help fill um, some of the gaps in our, our nursing staff, our um, public service staff, it, you know, and by that, I mean, our, our police, our firefighters, um, our teachers, um, all of the services that our residents desperately need. And um, so I think the city needs to support those types of opportunities and those partners when we have the ability to do so. Thank you. And we can just do a, a quick uh, answer to number five as you look to the future of Traverse City. Whose voices or perspectives most inspire you? Um, it's really the voices of the residents. And, and I want to say that we shouldn't get to a place of dissent and alarm because that doesn't leave room for contemplative solutions. We need a city culture that is alert to common threads being voiced by residents. Um, you know, and understanding is that perspective a trend? Is it time for change? So I'm inspired to nurture a city culture where residents are understood. Thank you, Ms. Kennedy. Thank you for, for joining us and um, appreciate the answers. We'll move on to uh, Ms. You, Mills. Good evening, Ms. Mills. Thanks for joining us. Hello. Uh, we'll hop right. We'll hop right into it for question number one. Why are you running for the city commission and are there current city policies or projects that you're hoping to change or champion? And if so, how? Well, one of the main reasons I'm running for uh, city commissioner is because um, I've been attending planning commission meetings for the last couple of years. I'm part of the master plan leadership team. And one thing that I, I noticed that was missing from this is the citizen involvement and their voice. And so that basically has been my big um, push to get involved because I've been talking to residents and hearing, like many have said before me, that lack of trust between the city and the residents has deteriorated. And my goal is to repair that, to bring that back together. Thank you. Number two, what do you see as the commission's role in addressing the gaps in the housing continuum? Well, one, one idea I have is looking at, at the empty office spaces we have. We have a quite a large number of empty um, office space that, that could be repurposed into housing. Also looking at our commercial corridors. But most importantly is we need to be uh, regional about this. We need to work with our townships and get everyone on board. Um, one of the things is is that our transportation, we need to beef up our transportation so that um, a lot of these housing developments that are happening in the townships around, we can bring people in easier into Traverse City. Thank you. Moving on, do you support the use of tax increment financing as a tool for the region to share in the costs of the city's infrastructure and community development? Well, I'll explain it this way. Um, currently, as TIF 97 stands, I do not. Now, on Monday, there was a study session where the DDA uh, unveiled their moving downtown forward TIF. It sounds very promising, but I am encouraging them to bring that to the vote of the people. You know, a promise was made 30 years ago to end TIF 97. Um, if this plan is as, as great as they say it is, and it will address our regional uh, partners, and some of our infrastructure, I think it should be brought before the people and voted on them as well. Thank you. Number four, how do you believe the city should engage with regional partners to attract more young people and working age families to our region? Well, competitive wages is top, housing and transportation. I think we need to work collectively on bringing those all together. And I think that will help encourage younger younger people to move in to the city. Thank you. Final question. As you look to the future of Traverse City, whose voices or perspectives most inspire you and what do they inspire you to seek to accomplish during your term on the commission? Well, I would say again, like many have said, it's the residents. And what has inspired me, I, I look, for example, what happened at the Ida Tompkins building. We had uh, two gentlemen, Ken and Eric, that came forward out of the residence and said, we can save this building. We can repurpose it. Look what we can do. 
And I'm running on, we need all voices to make good decisions. And so including residents, we don't know who's out there that could help us with our housing, could help us with our infrastructure. Um, so we need to include everyone at the table. Thank you, Ms. Mills. Appreciate the answers. And thank you again for, for joining us. You're welcome. Uh, next up, we have uh, Shay O'Brien. Mr. O'Brien, there you are. Can you hear and see me? <laughs> yes. Yep. Thanks for taking the time. We'll hop right into it. Number one, why are you running for the commission? And are there any city current city policies, projects, or approaches that you're hoping to change or champion? And if so, how? I'm running for office as someone who has lived, worked, and learned in Traverse City my entire life. Um, my parents and grandparents worked hard to create a home for me, and it's time for me to kind of continue that work. Um, I have a keen planning mind and always weigh any cost to us today versus the benefits to us tomorrow. Pragmatic, intentional, thoughtful. Um, as the vice chair for the Sarah Hardy Farmers Market Board, um, something I'd like to champion is the extension of TIF 97 uh, to continue to make our community better for us all. And I'm looking forward to the opportunity to serve my community further. Thank you, Shay. And I will. Your audio is coming in just a little bit fuzzy, and so I think maybe if you turn your camera off, it may come in just a little bit clearer. I just want to make sure everyone can can understand correctly. And we do know your video is working and we'll give a little grace on this timeline as okay. well. Um, uh, question number two, what do you see as the city commission's role in addressing the gaps in the housing continuum? The commission's role in addressing the incremental infill, uh, continue the use of pilots to build affordable units and encourage the use of brownfield dollars to build more housing. Um, we should also listen to our area's employers in regards to what their employees need and want as far as housing. You know, is it the flexibility of a rental or the permanence of a mortgage of mortgage home ownership? Um, you know, how can we support one or the other or both? Uh, we only get the answers when we ask the questions. Thank you. And I, I know that was a bit fuzzy, but uh, Mr. O'Brien did hit on utilizing uh, local pilot programs and the Brownfield Act uh, to address housing. Number three, uh, and you already hit on it, but do you support the use of tax increment financing as a tool for the region to share in the cost of the city's infrastructure and community development? I do support the extension of 1097 uh, because it's an intelligent long-term investment in downtown. Your budget, it's our blueprint for a thriving downtown. Everyone chips in and we all benefit. Um, an important project that will be completed with TIF dollars is the boardwalk along the Boardman Ottaway River. Um, and I believe this will become a crown jewel for our community. Thank you. Uh, question number four. How do you believe the city should engage with regional and, excuse me, how do you believe the city should engage with regional partners to attract more young people and working age families to the region? Yeah, the, the city should engage its regional partners as a leader, but with an openness to collaborate and learn. Um, the city is doing a pretty good job of attracting young and working class people by investing in an active transportation network green spaces, um, community engagement. Uh, housing is obviously our pinch point and only when we work with the region to build a well-planned housing network near public people. We don't have all the answers and should be willing to listen and help where we can. And, and uh, Shay, thank you for that answer. Here's what we're gonna do. The, the Your audio is coming in just a little bit fuzzy. So we're gonna stop at this last question. And if you could use your phone, to dial in, we're gonna move on uh, to, to Mr. Roman next, but Shay, if you can call back in at the end of uh, at the end of the session here, we'll have you continue with um, uh, with question number five and then maybe loop in something on or uh, anything that you felt uh, needed to be mentioned as well. Is that okay with you? Um, yeah, I, I do have another engagement. Um, so it, can I share my answer via email with you? guys yes yep if you you can email it to molly and uh we will share the answer of uh 
to question number five at the end of this webinar. Okay, that sounds good. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Your your key words were coming in clear, but just want to make sure that everyone was okay. uh, was up to date. So uh, thank you, Shay. Uh, moving on, Merrick Roman, Mr. Roman, yeah. thanks for, for hopping on. Um, we'll get right in here. We'll, we'll get right into it. And question number one, why are you running for city commission? And are there any current city policies, projects, or approaches that you're hoping to change or champion? And if so, how? So my name is Merrick Roman. I'm running for the city commission because I want to create sustainable solutions for my future family and for our city. I'm a native to the area. I grew up in Glen Arbor. I'm active in our community. And I believe that I want to work on making our city great for, our, for my future family and for all the future families there that are out there. I am one of the lucky few that boomeranged. I went out to industry, went to Michigan State, got a chemical engineering degree. I went off into industry and I was had the chance to boomerang back here with my uh, buying a house and finding a, a startup job. And I want to create sustainable policies that makes those jobs even more. And we need, we're not just a tourism community. We're not just a great place to look at. We are Traverse City, and I want to have these uh, more jobs and more young families like myself be here. Thank you. And moving on, what do you see as the commission's role in addressing housing? So the commission's role, I believe that we are need to work on trying to find a difference in valuing our property. So there's no discernible difference between how we value our short-term rentals versus our long-term rentals. And we can take steps with zoning ordinances but what I've been talking about with knocking on the 2000 doors that I've been on so far is that we have a master plan that's being passed right now and we are passing zoning ordinances or in the midst of passing zoning ordinances that are not based on a current master plan. And I believe that we need to make sure that we pass it with the city's consensus at that. Given, given that, let's put that aside, we need to work, look at financial ways to incentivize our developers to build the housing that we need, whether it's through Tip, uh, whether it's through the pilot program or just through tax assessments. We need to make sure that, well, I don't care if we work with profit or nonprofit people, but we need to make sure that we have a slew of short-term rentals that can be made into long-term rentals. That is a lot of housing supply that we desperately need. Thank you. And with respect to TIF, do you support the use of tax increment financing as a tool for the region to share in the cost of the city's infrastructure and community development? I do. Well, you know what I'm not in favor of? I'm not in favor of waste. I am not in favor of taking money, having a big mountain of money that the TIF is and making it and being wasteful with it just because we have almost 30 years worth of tax capture. We have a senior center that's being built right now that absolutely needs that money to be fully funded so that we can take care of our seniors. I'm absolutely concerned about that. I also want to make sure that beta, part of my part of my policy with having affordable housing, transportation equals affordable housing. We need to make sure that beta is strong too. So having a, a pile of money that's being accumulated for great projects, downtown absolutely needs it. And we have great leadership at the DDA. But what I want to, uh, what I want as a city commissioner, I want to make sure that we have the same transparency that we do with our capital improvement budget. I want to make sure that the DDA has all their projects on ArcGIS so that everyone knows. Furthermore, I want to make sure that we don't chip call the TIF moving our downtown forward. It's going to be called TIF 27 because it's a promise. I am against calling these acts by names that make it sound great that we never want a sunset. This is absolutely a promise that we're making right now. I want to make sure that we keep it that way. Thank you. Uh, question number four, how do you believe the city should engage with regional partners to attract more young people and working age families to the region? I'm glad you asked that. Right now, my office is at 20 Fathoms. I think that the blue economy that we have, NMC, 20 Fathoms, Economic Development Corporation, Traverse Connect, they are all great places that I want to make sure that they get the resources that they need from the city commission. I think that, you know, the reason why I came back, I went, came back to 20 Fathoms for a startup company before the pandemic. I think that we need to make sure our partners like that are, that have the resources they need from the city and that they are welcomed with open arms. I want to definitely, I want to absolutely give a shout out. I'll, I'll take on question five right now, that we have great people in our community. Warren Call, their CEO at Traverse Connect is great. I want to make sure that 
the, he has the ability to bring in the manufacturers for our waterways, for our electric boats. I wanna make sure that we have our NMC at Nick Nestle, that he can bring in the quality people and have those degrees uh, to give out to our, uh, to our prospective students. I wanna make sure that we have PhDs, master's level, level students here. And I wanna take my, my values I have being a Glen Arbor native and with my academic background at Johns Hopkins, and to make sure that we have the best and brightest here and they have jobs because we're gonna attract great talent and we're gonna have value added jobs. That is what our city needs. We're not just tourism. We are a technology-based city. And when the Wall Street Journal came out with their article about two days in Traverse City, I was the first person on there, the Wall Street Journal comment section saying that we are more than just views of the Bay. We are a tech juggernaut, blue water economy, value added jobs. That's my campaign right there. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you rolling right through those. We will move on next uh, to Heather Shaw. Ms. Shaw, thanks for being here. Hi there. All right, so the microphone's working. Um, well, question number one, Ms. Shaw, why are you running for city commission and are there any current city policies, projects, or approaches that you're hoping to change or champion? And if so, how? Yes, well, after nearly six years on the Planning Commission, I got the bug. And I also witnessed a disconnect between the voices of the residents and some big ideas coming from the city. At last Monday's City Commission meeting, Interim Manager Nate Geisner noted that he's never seen such a high level of mistrust in government in a community. Somehow over the last year or so, city government has lost the pulse of city residents. Uh, uh, population growth in surrounding townships Increased tourism and climate change are challenging Traverse City's infrastructure. I would like to contribute to finding resilient and responsible solutions that put our residents, property and environment first. Thank you. Question number two, what do you see as the commission's role in addressing housing? Well, the package of upzoning amendments currently on the city commissioner's desks has been the, at the top of the agenda for at least six months. These amendments are full of good ideas, but that's all they really are. They're just ideas. What the city commission has is boilerplate zoning, almost completely lacking in any fine tuning relevant to our geography, our economy, or our demographic. There are so many places where this could go very wrong. For one, we could lose the attainable housing we have right now to equity investment. I read the papers, I read the financial pages, and I've seen the relentless urging by financial planners to forget the stock market and put your money in REIT. This may be great for someone's bottom line, but it's a terrible idea for prospective homeowners and devastating to our neighborhoods. We must look for ways to inform and protect our current and future residences. Residents. I'm also unhappy that the housing problem has been foisted on our old and already very built out neighborhoods when we have plenty of space on our commercial corridors that are prepared and zoned for density. There we could have truly attainable housing that's close to transportation, work, and play. New pilots and grants from the state could help developers. Thank you. Question number three, do you support the use of tax increment financing as a tool for the region to share in the cost of the city's infrastructure and community development? Well, the TIF 97 has been an incredibly successful urban renewal tool, but I am not convinced that the city needs another 30 years of downtown focused tax financing. Also, contrary to the aspirations or the stated aspirations of the DDA, I do not see the TIF district as a reasonable place to add attainable housing because of by right unlimited short-term rentals and high property values. As I mentioned before, I'd like to see more development on our corridors, places where working people can live, buy groceries, walk into a pharmacy, and still get wherever they need to in the city in 15 minutes. Thank you. And uh, with respect to, to workforce development, how do you believe the city should engage with regional partners to attract more young people and working age families to the region? Well, wouldn't it be nice if the county had a master plan there's just so much to talk about here from more convenient beta service to making sure that we preserve enough green spaces as the township's population increases. The city is too small to house everyone and young families historically prefer a single family house with a yard. Sprawl is inevitable, but it doesn't have to be a dirty word if we plan regionally for transportation, green transportation and preserve green spaces. 
I think the Discover Blue Consortium is a great place to work with regional partners. This project could lead to serious jobs with serious wages. And I'm also excited by the prospect of the consortium working with the region to solve some of our water problems like stormwater management and water recycling that need global solutions. This area could be a model for how to build for the future. But remember, the people attracted by these jobs will also be attracted and retained by our good schools and healthcare, our abundant parks and trails, our leafy neighborhoods, and a stable and agile city government. Thank you. And the final question, as you look to the future of Traverse City, whose voices or perspectives most inspire you? And what do they inspire you to seek to accomplish? Well, I grew up in Traverse City and I have always been aware of the enormous wealth of experience in the area. My mother and aunt were part of the start of TSO and they also helped get Pathfinder on its feet. My mother organized Connie Binsfield's first run for office and both she and I helped found the Traverse City Film Festival. Everyone I've met on this journey, young and old, has been engaged, informed, and full of big ideas about Traverse City's possibilities, but ideas need a foundation. They need research, discussion, and consensus if we're gonna successfully, successfully pitch those to an engaged, informed community. As part of my career as an editor, writer, and publisher, I'm a reader first, and I read widely and across genres, and I always pay attention to the TCBN. As a city commissioner, I will bring that lifetime of investigative research along with family tradition of service to the community and the resources of a wide ranging group of residents, friends and associates with experiences far outside my own. Thank you, Ms. Shock. <laughs> right on time. Right yeah. on time. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank uh, you. Moving on, uh, uh, Commissioner Mitch Treadwell. Commissioner, thank you for joining us. Um, you know, I've done a lot of these forums across Northern Michigan. I have never seen so many candidates stay within the time frame. Uh, I have a tough time with two most of the time, but um, so no pressure. Um, but thank you again for joining us and we'll kick it off with uh, question number one. Why are you running for the city commission? And are there any city policies, projects or approaches that you're hoping to change or champion? And if so, how? Well, as a current city commissioner, I'm hoping to see a smooth transition to a new city manager that we just approved a couple of days ago. Uh, completion of a senior center and the fish pass project, an overhaul of our master plan that should be done by the start of next year, and a number of other projects that are in the works. Also, there are priorities that I would like to do that so far, because of the other things going on, I haven't been able to spend enough time on. Uh, for example, working to protect our waterways through our riparian buffer ordinance and other tools to protect sensitive um, wildlife habitats and to promote good water quality. Thank you. And question number two, what do you see as the commission's role in addressing housing? Well, the commission can, through appointing members of the Traverse City Housing Commission, like myself, uh, work to directly manage and create um, publicly owned and operated housing in the Traverse City area. But also what we can do is work with uh, nonprofit developers like Habitat for Humanity and Homestretch and for-profit developers like uh, Cunningham Limp, Inovo, and, and others that are willing to work with the low-income tax credit system or our city's newly passed pilot ordinance that already we have a proposal from Inovo to use that to incorporate more affordable housing into one of their proposed developments. Thank you. With respect to TIF, how do you see the use of tax, excuse me, do you support the use of tax increment financing as a tool for the region to share, to share in the cost of the city's infrastructure and community development? Currently, TIF is the best tool for allowing there to be the higher amount of infrastructure and investment that is needed in the economic engine of a large region like Traverse City. The downtown does not just serve Traverse City, it serves the entire Grand Traverse area. And we need to invest more for sidewalks, bridges, trash collection, uh, policing than we would in other parts of town or in other parts of the county, and TIF provides a great tool for allowing those um, resources to be invested well in our community. 
Thank you. And how do you believe the city should engage with regional partners to attract more young people and working age families to our region? Well, the uh, MPO process on which I am the city's uh, representative is one tool to allow for better collaboration between all the municipal partners in the area. But that's just one tool that we can use for regional collaboration. Also, Traverse Connect with its uh, Creative Coast program, um, other initiatives by Networks Northwest, uh, the state of Michigan's new You Can in Michigan campaign, and other um, agencies are all working to provide better services for people that are looking to relocate in Michigan and specifically in our area, which compared to other cities, does have a lot of great natural scenery, does have good schools, um, does have good uh, four season recreational opportunities. Thank you. And final question, as you look to the future of Traverse City, whose voices or perspectives most inspire you? And what do they inspire you to seek to accomplish? Well, I can look at um, some of the people that shaped myself, uh, like my first grade teacher, Pam Fulkerson, and uh, librarian Jill Burt at Traverse City Public Library, but also the people that continue to shape um, Traverse City today, like our current head librarian of Michelle Howard, and uh, people like uh, Janine Easterday that served on the City and Planning Commission, but continue to be involved voices for their community. Also great community communicators like uh, Liam McCollum, who has collaborated with the city and uh, Drivers Connect and a number of other entities to help better uh, communicate what is happening with the general public and to get feedback on how those plans are working. Thank you, Commissioner. We, we appreciate the time. And uh, that was the the final question, we will read the final answer from uh, candidate Shay O'Brien. He was unable to answer question number five due to audio issues. Uh, that question again being whose voice inspires you. And Shay O'Brien says, my wife's voice inspires me as the audience, my wife's voice inspires me and as the audience engagement manager for the Denos Museum. She has the pulse of what arts organizations and organizations in, the, in general should do to engage young working class people, a much needed asset for our community to have a future. I am an approachable individual and I like to discuss our area's issues. So as I've been knocking on doors, I've listened to a lot of voices and I plan to make the best decisions for Traverse City's future. I also ask myself the question, what does the next generation need from me to thrive in Traverse City? And taking that into account regarding all city issues. That was the last answer from, from Shay O'Brien and just wanted to say thank you again to uh, our mayoral candidates and uh, city commission candidates for taking the time. Again, this will be posted to the Traverse Connect YouTube page within 24 hours from now. So please uh, feel free to share with your networks uh, as much as you can. And just wanted to say thank you so much again to our candidates for being here and for staying well within the timelines. I'm, I'm very impressed uh, with, with everyone moving along with questions that I'm sure could have been elaborated on uh, much longer. So uh, again, thank you to everyone for joining us and have a great rest of your evening.